I'm really, really excited to introduce uh, John Ballman. I met John several years ago when I was serving as a consultant uh, for a pharma company that hired us to come in and develop an MSL team. Come on up. Uh, and develop a field medical affairs team. And John was one of the patient advocates for this pharma company. He had a great story. And so what uh, we wanted to do was invite him to the conference. We all talk about patient impact and the end of what our goal is, is to have a positive impact on patient. And John has a great story. So John, thank you very much and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Samuel. I'm a part, can you hear me? Yes. I'm a Parkinson's patient. I'm also a proud person with Parkinson's. That's a, there's a big difference there. Um, I, I'm doing all the things necessary to have the, the best life possible with Parkinson's. And I've had Parkinson's for 18 years. Thank you. I've had Parkinson's for 18 years. And it's been a tough road. It's, it's a horrific disease. And if you've had any exposure to it, and I'm hoping that you do, and I'm hoping that you find a cure for it, because that's what purpose that for being here. That's what you're trying to do. You'd be a part of the, part of the solution. Find a way to find a, 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 um, a cure for it. And that's why I, I, th I want to thank everyone in the room for, for your, your role that you play. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, by the way, I, I, I'm, I, I like to tell jokes. So <laughs> hope you don't mind. I'm not disrespecting the disease but I tell jokes. Um, what, I want, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go through these three things. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to understand what Parkinson's is like, because some people don't get exposed to Parkinson's. Some people unfortunately do, but some people don't. I want you to better understand how critical your role is in managing the chronic conditions and kn know that you're, you're appreciated, and I'll explain that in a second. When, you di when you're diagnosed with Parkinson's, and let me tell you what happened. I, was, I went to see my, my primary care physician, and she said, you need to go see a neurologist. And she didn't tell me why. So I went to see a neurologist, and I, I wrote out the paperwork, and the, it was the last patient of the day, and the, the secretary left, receptionist left. The doctor came out, and I handed him the, her, her the paperwork, and she said, you have Parkinson's disease. Four words that changed my life. And I said, hold on a second. You haven't looked up my nose, you haven't taken blood, you haven't hit my knee, hammer with a knee, my knee with a hammer. What, what is this? She said, you have all the classic symptoms. You, you, your hand is tremoring. You don't, your arm doesn't swing when you walk. It's interesting. My arm didn't swing when I walked. I never noticed that before. You have a, you have a blank face, you don't show expression, and you don't blink. And your handwriting is awful. I said, I'm an attorney. Of course my handwriting is awful. <laughs> she said, well, you have Parkinson's disease. I said, I want a confirmatory test. I demand a confirmatory test. She said, that would be an autopsy. <laughs> so I opted against the autopsy. <laughs> I said, what's the second choice? She said, second choice is to take the, the medicine, levodopa carbidopa, it's called, and uh, if, if it works, you've got it. So it worked. And what it is is in your brain, for those of you that don't know it, it creates do dopamine. Dopamine is released in your brain. When, when you're down to 20% of normal, that's pretty low, you start exhibiting these manifestations or symptoms. I call them manifestations because once, once you've been diagnosed, you don't have symptoms anymore, you have manifestations. So I, I've had, I, I have all these manifestations. Um, so you go through an emotional roller coaster. I mean, the first thing you do is, is you, you, you're in shock. The next thing, what do you think this slide represents? Denial. I like that. Went through denial, went through shock. Actually, I'll tell you about shock. I actually saw white light only three times in my life. When I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, I, I, I could swear I could see white light. I was, I was so blown away, so shocked. But two other times, interestingly enough, were in, were in buses, and I was in accidents both times. One time the bus tipped over, and the other time the bus went into the trees. And the driver was killed. So if you see me get on a bus, get off the bus. <laughs> Depression. I always say to people with Parkinson's, of course you're depressed, you have Parkinson's. Why wouldn't you be depressed? Yeah. But I didn't know what, dep what, par what depression was until I, I was driving in my car one day after I was diagnosed, and there's less dopamine in my brain, so there's less, there's less pleasure center. 
And I, I went into the deepest, darkest hole. I, I went into, I don't know if you, anyone out there has ever experienced this. I went through, I went, I was so depressed. I didn't care if I lived or died. I was driving along and I went into this hole and I was like, wow, what the heck is this? And it happened about two weeks later. And I, I, I tell people, go get medicine. If you need medicine, go get medicine. Don't, don't not take antidepressants just because you, it's, not, it's not fashionable or whatever. Take them. You have, to, for Christ's sake, you have, you have Parkinson's. Um, so I went through depression. Okay, I'm getting depressed right now. <laughs> Jim Valvano. Jim Valvano is a, a basketball coach, or was a basketball coach. And he did an SB Awards banquet that was unbelievable. And what his saying is, ne don't give up, don't ever give up. Don't give up, never give up. And that's what, that's what I've been experiencing the last 17 years. I have situations come up that are unbelievable. I was um, flying once to, to a, a conference, and I, I flew into to Layover City in Atlanta, and I had to use the restroom. And I went to the restroom, and I couldn't get the button, I have dexterity issues, I couldn't get the button off my jeans open. And I had to go to the bathroom. So I'm standing there, and I have to go to the bathroom. I can't get the jeans open. And I, I looked around, and there was one guy, it looked like a biker dude, on, a, um, on the <laughs> urinal. And I said, I've got two choices. I either let go, and I, I get on a plane with a wet leg, or I ask this guy to undo my button. And it was not a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually got the button open, thank God. But I deal with that, <laughs> I, I deal with that every day. Every day, when I'm, sometimes I wake up and I'm paralyzed. And it's a creepy feeling, it's not fun. But I'm paralyzed, I can't move. I literally can't move my arms. And I have to inch, inch my pillow out from under my head, and I have to move the sheets as much as I can, and it takes me half an hour sometimes. It's, it's tough, I'm not saying, I'm not, it's not a pity party, I'm just giving you experience of what, what it's like to deal with with Parkinson's. There's so much more than just the physical aspects of it. Um, in fact, there's some cognitive issues. I have short-term memory loss. I, I don't have, I have trouble remembering short term. I have trouble, um, three of them. I have trouble uh, memory loss, I have trouble with multitasking, and I have trouble with short term memory loss. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Does anyone know who this guy is? We're a big Red Sox family. Ted Williams. My brother's name is Ted because of the Red Sox. My parents met because of the Red Sox. So we're a big Red Sox family. This guy was a, one, of the, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, hitter of all times. He was interviewed when he was 65 years old, and he, he was asked, D how would you do against today's pitchers? He said, about about 200. 200 is terrible. And, and the, 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 the reporter said, you think the pitchers are that much better today than they were back when you were playing? He said, I'm 65 years old, for goodness sake. How do you think I'd hit? What's crazy about that is he's, he, hits, he, he thinks he'd still get two hits out of every 10 at 65 years old. Um, that's believing in yourself. And one of the things that happens with Parkinson's that people don't know about, and I'm just starting to talk about, is losing self-confidence, losing self-worth, losing self-esteem, losing, I, I've, I've lost a tremendous amount of earning potential. Because um, I, I had to give up practicing law at 50. I was a top lawyer for a corporation. I w went to Cornell Law School. I, don't, I had a future ahead of me, and it happened, you get Parkinson's. I wasn't riding a motorcycle without a helmet on, I didn't do bungee jumping, it just happens. So you gotta, you gotta get up, you gotta get back up, you gotta believe in yourself. One of the stories I tell is when, when you come up, when you, remember when you were 10 or 11 years old, and you went to, um, you went, got home, and you walk, open the door, and you say, I'm home! You announce your presence with authority. That's cool. There might be no cars in the driveway, you might know that your parents aren't home, but you say it anyway. I'm home, and it, it, it's, it's cool because it, it shows, you, we have to get back to that. And I tell people with Parkinson's, you've got to get, get your self-esteem back, you've got to get your self-confidence back, you've got to do it. Um, someone that doesn't lack self-confidence is the late Muhammad Ali. Um, he, he says, um, I knew I was the greatest even before I was. That's confidence, and that's what I talk to people about. You've got to have the confidence of Ali. And uh, I met the man once, he was, um, at, uh, he was in, in the luggage, baggage claim at, at Louisville Airport, and it was the first time I went to Louisville, and he was handing out religious material, and I got to meet him. It was kind of cool. He's like an idol of mine. Um, 
I asked that my friend, does he, does he do this every week? He said, no, he doesn't. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice. It's huge. You never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. Everyone here has life-changing adversity. Everyone here, it's not whether you have it, it's how many you have. It's how you deal with it that, sh that defines you as a person, that, that, that shows your, your mettle, shows your inner, inner, inner strength. And that's, that's incredible. All right, the next one's a fun one. Caregivers make a difference every day. You are considered caregivers. You provide a service that provides care to people. You work with doctors, you work with scientists, you, 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 you provide, provide a service. You make a difference every day. There's, everyone loves initials after the names. I have JD and people have PhD and people have MD. Well, you get initials. R, T, B, D, A. Rarely thanks, but definitely appreciate. And that's key, that's important. And I'll, I'll tell you why that's important. I'm not the only one in my family that has, that's had, had life-changing adversity. As, as I mentioned, everyone has it. My daughter was, was we went in for the ultrasound and um, the, the, the nurse was doing the, the jelly on the belly and whatever. And she, she said to me, she said, she put down the wand and said, I have to go talk to the doctor. Didn't say anything else. We just walked out of the room. My, my, my wife and I looked at each other and said, well, what the heck was that? She came back in and she, she did a replay of the, of the sonogram. And she said, see it right there. And the doctor said, I don't see it. She said, see it right there. The doctor said, I don't see it. She said, see it right there. The doctor said, I see it. I said, see what? Well, she had a hole in her diaphragm that allowed the stomach to come up into the chest cavity. And that doesn't sound real bad, but it, it prevents the lungs from developing. So she had a 40% chance of living. We were in shock. So on her sixth day of birth, after birth, she, she, was, she had a Gore-Tex pad put in. They moved the stomach down. They put the Gore-Tex pad in. And then we had to pray for the lungs to develop, and they did. And um, the, the nurses were great. I, 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 needed to, I needed to know what I could do, because I was helpless. And they said, make a tape of your voice and your favorite songs, and have, have the, we'll play it in the ICU. She was five pounds, one ounce. Play it in the ICU, and she'll hear your voice, and she'll hear the music. And um, so she, she made it through, and she got her lungs, and she, she was in ICU for 60 days, and then she was fed through a tube in her side. It's, it's pretty, a pretty tough experience. Um, when she was four years old, she started singing a song that, was coming, that came on the radio. And it was, all my brothers, you're my blue sky, you're my sunny day. And Lord, you know you make me high when you turn your love my way. Turn your love my way. And she started singing that along with the radio. And that was one of the songs I put on the tape. She heard it. So she got out of the hospital. When she was in fifth, then she had several operations because she has cerebral palsy. She lives with it, she does great. But she, um, she, fifth grade, she wanted to be a cheerleader. And she, she, um, so she, I said to her, kids are tough in fifth grade. They, they, they're cruel. You sure you want to put yourself out there and be a cheerleader? You're not going to be able to do all the moves. You, and she, she did, and she was great at it. And she, 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 I was very proud of her. Well, the next year, she said, I'm not going to be a cheerleader. And I said, oh, did someone say something to you? Did they make fun of you? And she said, no, Dad, I want to play on the basketball team. I can't be on the basketball team and be a cheerleader at the same time. <laughs> Wow, this girl has moxie. <laughs> so she, she would go out, with 30 seconds to go, they'd put her in, she'd go to the spot on defense and stand there and she couldn't do much, and then she'd run down the court the best she can and she'd play on the other side. That was cool. Um, she graduated from high school and she decided to go to university. She, she went to university and what she decided to do was she, um, she was not treated right when she was kindergarten through fifth grade. There were two, classes were too big. She learned differently because of her cerebral palsy. And she, um, she didn't excel. So in fifth grade, the, she, she left and went to a special school and they, they taught her differently. Um, she wants to be a guidance counselor in the elementary school. She's a psychology major and an early childhood development minor. And she wants to be a guidance counselor so that she can, she can help kids that, better than they helped her. So that's awesome. She just started a University of Alabama graduate school three-year program. Awesome. Check, check, check. 
And what I want to say about this is I didn't thank the nurse. Rarely thanked, but definitely appreciated. I didn't thank the nurse. I didn't thank my doctor when, when she, she diagnosed me with Parkinson's, but she did me a favor. But I didn't thank the nurse, and to this day, I don't know that nurse's name. She saved my daughter's life. Saved her life. She, she didn't, there was another child that came in from another hospital that didn't, didn't, they didn't see it on the ultrasound, and they died on the way to the hospital because they have to put you on life support. The lungs don't work. They have to put you on life support and take the, all the blood out of your body and put, put, put oxygenated blood in. This child died because the nurse didn't see it. That's powerful. Now the humor part. It's unbelievable with the Venetian because I was in Venice with my wife and I was going across a bridge and my foot started to cramp. I said, another surprise what Parkinson's given me. It's a gift, I get my foot cramps, turns to the side and turn, toes go all different directions, it's gross. So I said, I don't know what this is. It turns out to be dystonia, if you know what that is. And I sat on the curb on a bridge, just like this, and I, I, I sat there and I said, I don't know what's gonna happen, I don't know how long this lasts, I don't know anything. So she, we, I sat there for about five minutes and my wife said, you wanna get up now? She said, I can't, I can't, my foot, foot won't move. She said, she took the ball, ball cap off my head and handed it to me upside down and said, make some money while you're down there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. The other thing that, happens is, it's a true story, I, I used to play Texas Hold'em, we're in a casino, to play Texas Hold'em at every Monday night during, during Monday Night Football at a friend's house, and, and I was terrible. I, was, I, I, I would show every, every time I got a good hand, I'd be like, yeah! <laughs> and every time I was bluffing, I'd be like stone-faced. Um, so they picked that up. So, so when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, I would stop taking the medication two days before the... <laughs> And no one knew when I got that fourth queen because, as I said, my, face doesn't, my facial expression doesn't move. Did I tell you the three things, the cognitive issues that you have with Parkinson's? <laughs> Do everything you can to live the best life possible. Let me talk about the positive. What I've done is I've, I made, I made it my mission, my job. It's, it's what I do. It's, I do everything I can to make it, to live the best life possible. Everyone should really, everyone should really do that. I shouldn't be alone. But it's, it's more critical with Parkinson's because you're, you're, you're so sensitive to stuff. Um, this is the way I looked when I, dis, when I decided seven years ago to, to make a difference. I was, I was literally in my, uh, my sister's basement on Christmas time and I was, I, was, I was like down in the dumps. I was depressed. I was watching TV all by myself. I was not in, interacting with the family. I was, I was having a really, I hit rock bottom. And I made the decision to do the things I need to do to, 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 to be the, live the best life possible. And um, I met my wife seven days later, January 7th in St. John of the Virgin Islands. And we got married the next month. It's kind of cool. It was a nice love story. Um, <laughs> and she, she's the one that handed me the hat. But um, she, she's an exercise enthusiast and a, and a nutrition enthusiast, so that was a good side 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 benefit. Um, she, she, she took me and, and turned me fr from 215 pounds um, to 165 pounds and I'm healthier than I've ever been in my life and she did it all for me. Check, what we started doing check. was we started eating right. You can't say enough about eating right. I think that what you, what, if, if you have the latitude to do this, maybe step out of the box, but I don't think there's a difference, I don't think there's a contradiction between healthy li eating and me medical medicine. I think you can, you can combine the two, and if, you, if, you, if you're ever working on a clinical trial or you're involved with a clinical trial, think about the, the f whether someone's eaten healthy or not. That might be a nice uh, angle. Um, and then I, I work out. There's a weird thing that happens, it's, it happens, uh, we discovered it about 10 years ago. Boxing is neuroprotective, or it's n the neuroplasticity in boxing is still known. What happens is, people with Parkinson's, I might be off, that means I'm slow, I'm rigid, and I might be punching the bag like this, and, and not being very effective with it. When, it. when the trainer comes with the mitts and says, left, right, left, right, right, left, one, two, all of a sudden my body wakes up. It's like, like a switch was turned on, it's like electricity. 
That's a strange phenomenon. And we should look into that. We should figure out why that happens and can we re re replicate that. Um, so I, I box three days a week and I do yoga one day a week and I do um, Peloton bike one, three days a week. If, you, if anyone's a Peloton junkie, it's pretty cool. But, but I always I exercise at least an hour a day and that's what I have to do. I don't have a choice. It's not like I'm, I'm gonna have a heart attack 10 years from now because I eat the wrong things today, fatty meat. Um, I, I actually feel it right away and it's important that I do this. This is my class. I um, started a class in Jayco's gym and there's 50 people in the class now. And you can see that they're, they're, they're older and they're, um, but, but they, they do it and they show up every day. I believe everyone has a purpose. I thought my purpose was to, to add new jobs, provide employment for people. And that was a, that's a good purpose. Uh, we went from 600 people to 1,500 people. Samuel's doing that too. Samuel's providing jobs for people and that's great. It gives people the opportunity, and I think this is what's missing in America. Uh, it may not, may not be, may, I, may, I don't want to get politi political, but finding jobs for people is, is a critical thing. And um, I was able to, to go from 600 people to 1,500 people in my corporation over 12 years. And um, that's put people who are able to put roof over their heads and, and uh, food on the table. And that's, that's a purpose. That's an un unbelievable purpose. Um, Uncover your purpose. Your purpose is there. I thought that was my purpose. It's not. My purpose is to come and, and do, inspire people to the best I can, to, to do things, that, do things that, that help other people. Um, belief, hope, love, and faith. Come on back. Okay. Leo Biscaglia is a great speaker. And what he speaks about is too often we underestimate the power of a smile, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring. Each of us would have the potential to turn a life around. That's what I advocate. Figure out what's your purpose. Everyone has a purpose. Now, I'm, I'm an inspirational speaker, but I get cotton mouth. And I, I, um, I don't have facial expressions, and I, I get rigid. It's a real smart move being an inspirational speaker. <laughs> but it, it works for me because people understand that I, that I, I have these difficulties and I, I fight through them. Because you never give up, don't ever give up. Um, does, do, you wanna, do you wanna ask questions? Because um, it says we have time. I'm surprised we do because we're supposed to only do 30 minutes. I think that was my fault, John. Is this on? Do you wanna um, throw that thing there around? There we go. Don't John, that me. was my fault. but. Uh, First and foremost, thank you very much. Awesome, inspiring story. Thank you. I've, been, I've been through a lot and I appreciate it. I, want to go ahead. I think Samuel got emotional earlier. I, I think that's wonderful. You know, I, I think it heart. takes a lot of courage um, to be here, and I commend you for it. Um, I remember when Heliana and I uh, last saw you, we had dinner with you and your lovely wife, Bernadette, down in Key Largo, right? Right. In Key Largo. We were just recently married. What's that? We were recently married. You were just recently married. And I was so inspired by your story, and I remember thinking, and of course we stayed in touch, that saying to, you know, we've been texting and contacting each other over the last couple of years and saying that one day, and we've been talking about it for a couple of years, you need to come. So again, um, I'm very happy you're here. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things that I think was really inspiring is when we were working together at that, at that pharma company, um, you were talking about just how important medical affairs and field medical is and having an impact on you and, and what you're doing. Can you sure. talk a little bit about that? Let me tell you, if it weren't for Levodopa carbidopa, which is the gold standard of Parkinson's, I would not be able to stand in front of you today. I, I would not be able to. And um, I'm actually involved with a World Parkinson's program out of Toronto that supplies, supplies levodopa carbidopa to underdeveloped and poverty com impoverished com countries. And that's, that gives me great pride. Because, um, but, but if it weren't for the me medication, I would not be able to do this. I would not be able to, I would be able to eat right, but I would not be able to exercise. And it's so critical to my, to my it's, 
when I exercise, it's the best I'm going to feel all day. And it, it, I just show up. Sometimes I can't do it, and sometimes I can. It's hard for me because I was a, I was a semi-professional softball player. I actually um, was in the Texas State Championship, and we won the championship as a shortstop. So athletics were, were important to me. And one of the first indications that I had Parkinson's was I had no zip on my throws anymore. I didn't have the dexterity. And, but but I, did, I, did, I did do something stupid, because you always do something stupid. I went, when I turned 55, I went to, to, to 55 and over league. And I, um, I went to batting practice, because I was 55. I figured I'd be the, the, the um, hot commodity. Um, and the first ball that was hit hit me in the head. I missed it. Then I pulled a hamstring, and then I crushed my finger. Um, so athletics has always been an important part of my life, and I had to give it up prematurely, and that, that's terrible. But it's so important that you, we, 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 we make advances. Um, we've taken levodopa carbidopa, and they now have an inhaler, which helps. They have, a, um, they have ta tablets that you can take. There's all sorts of things, and it's so important that you, that you guys do fulfill your role in the best, part, in the best, best you can, and, um, and bring, 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 get new innovations to market. Excellent. Thank you, John. <laughs> We've got a few minutes for some other questions. Um, any questions? Uh, Cherie, Linda, do you want to toss that microphone right back that way? Launch it. Oh, Josh is there. He'll help. Nice. <laughs> Hello. Hi. All right, perfect. Hi. That was so wonderful. Thank you I'm so, so much. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. This yes. was my fault. I didn't lay the ground rules. Please, oh. for networking purposes, when you ask a question, please stand up. Tell them your name and company. That'd be great. Hi. Um, my name is Keely Dahl, and I work with Arinia Pharma. Um, that was a wonderful talk, and I loved your dry sense of humor, so thank you so much for infusing that the entire time. One thing that I took away from your talk was that you, you spoke about some ways that you can, um, you know, improve yourself, you know, feel good when times are tough. You talked about fitness, you talked about nutrition through your wife, um, support groups. You, you had a lot of really great suggestions, but sometimes um, when you're there for someone, they just don't want to take any advice. You know, they're in a really dark place and they're not ready to take that, and I'm curious what you've done for those people that um, no matter what you suggest, they're not taking it. Well, first of all, lead by example. You lead by example. I, my, I couldn't say to anybody, you need to eat right, you need to exercise, if I didn't lose 45 pounds. Um, I, 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 I was overweight, and I was ready for a heart attack, and I was had high cholesterol, and I, I, I did it. I don't remember st stepping on a scale between 215 and 175, 170. That's how, that's, how short, that's how I did it. I, eat, I ate right and for the first time in my life. I ate, I ate, I ate vegan. And I, um, th it's funny, the, 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 the water in there, they said vegan and gluten-free. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up. But um, short-term memory. Lost my train of thought. What I did was, um, what you need to do is walk the talk. If you, if you want to give advice to someone, you need to do what, what you're saying. And that's what we did. We started work, working out an hour a day, and um, it, was, it was a great story. Thanks. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Okay, there we go. Oh, by the way, I wrote a book called Decide Success. I brought a few copies of it. It's called Decide Success. You Ain't Dead Yet. Hi. Um, my name is Omran al and I'm aspiring MSL. Um, Thank you for your story. It's like amazing and inspiring. Uh, my question is, uh, you seem like to have a really good understanding of what's going on. Uh, what's your like, main source of educating yourself about Parkinson's disease? I should have a doctorate in Parkinson's. <laughs> that's, how, that's how knowledge I do I believe so. I, um, it's amazing to me. I wrote, a, I wrote an article. That I, I have some brochures. I wrote an article that talks about um, if I knew then what I know now, there's such a lack of information out there, or it's not in the right place, or it's not centrally located, that it, it, it's awful. Um, I had to learn so many things from, from experience that, that I would have done differently. Like, like, for example, I wouldn't have told my work. I was, I was up front about it. I got back to work, and I said, I need to tell the CEO and the board of directors, and I did. And um, I wouldn't have told them. 
because there's, there's ramifications of telling them. And um, I, I won't get into that right now, but it's, 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 I wouldn't have told them. So there's so many things to think about before you, you make decisions on, on getting a chronic illness. And I, 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 wasn't, I, I wasn't told them. So I'm making it my, my life's mission to, to get information out to people. And to an, I, I answer questions. I, I go see, I go, to, um, I go to pharmaceutical companies and talk to their um, representatives, the pharma, pharmaceutical reps, and I pump them up and I get them fired up about doing what they're doing. And, and I talk to them about Parkinson's and I give them the inside scoop because there's a lot to it. I did not know that, that short-term memory loss and, and uh, inability to, to multitask. And I did not know that until recently. That's something that should have been told to me, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna have impaired cognitive ability and that's, that's important. And there's so, many, there's so many things that are motor skills, but there's non-motor non skills as well that you deal with. Uh, I was at a conference in, in uh, Toronto and the, the, the doctor said, and he said this twice, he said, you got drooling, constipation, and, and uh, dysfunctional sex life. I said, of course, you're drooling and you have constipation, of course you're gonna have <laughs> that. That was cracking me up. I gotta tell you another story. These Superman shirts ma uh, make me laugh because my dad was really funny. And he, 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 he looked like Clark Kent. He looked at dead on Clark Kent. He had black framed glasses and looked like Clark Kent. And he, he one time was unbuttoning his shirt and he had a Superman shirt underneath it. And he said, oh, I gotta button it back up. I can't let anyone know I was, I'm Superman. And he, he wouldn't jump off the high dive at the pool because he was, he was afraid to do it. But he would say, the problem is I might fly around the, 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 the pool and people would know I'm Superman. I mean, he, he, he cracked me up. Um, I'm just telling you random jokes. <laughs> <laughs> when I graduated law school, he, the dean wanted to meet the, my parents because I'm, I'm a quite unusual lawyer. I'm not a typical lawyer, obviously. And um, so the de de dean came over and, met my, and I said, watch out, my dad's a prankster. And he said, you must be very proud. Your, your son's graduating from a top law school. And my dad said, well, he's kind of the black sheep of the family. <laughs> okay. Um, he said, I'm a teacher. My wife's a college professor. My son's a fifth grade teacher. My daughter's a second grade teacher. And he's a lawyer. And, and the dean said, well, he can always teach at law school. And I said, here? He said, no, somewhere else, anywhere else. <laughs> I actually taught at University of Los, Lo, Louisville Law School for 10 years. So I've had, I've had like nine lives. And I, I can relish in that. Even though Parkinson's is a terrible thing, it, it opened up opportunities for me. I wrote books. I wrote a book with Deepak Chopra. I, um, I, I, I do these wonderful speeches. Sam lo Samuel says he loves to be up here. I love to be up here. I'll be up here all day. Because <laughs> I, I, I think that people need humor. They need to feel good. And laughing is great therapy. And with, with all we have to put up in this life, with all we have to put up with, it's great to laugh. And that's what I try to bring. Cool. John, once again, thank you very much. Talk to anyone that wants to talk to me, I'll stay the rest of the conference. <laughs>